Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In the previous two lectures, we learned about the clarity and how we can achieve the clarity. Previous one, we learned two ways of achieving clarity. One was providing specific detail and one was answering reporter question. As we know, the choice of words is very important when we are producing the message. So in this lecture today, we are going to talk about how we can choose the right words for our communication and how different words can influence our communication and can make it effective or ineffective. Whenever we are communicating, we must think about the words, which words we are using. Sometimes people try to dominate the other ones through their words, their communication. Sometimes we try to impress the people through our high five vocabulary, whether it is in Urdu language or is in English language. Sometimes even in Urdu people try to speak more difficult kind of words so that they can put some kind of impression on the people that they know very much about the language, they are well versed, they are well educated. Same is the case here. Most of the time, few of the students consult us and they say, Sir, please, would you mind to mention a few very difficult words in our application or in our presentation so that the people will get an impression that we are using a very good kind of vocabulary. But when it comes to communication, daily life communication or business communication. It's not the case. As we have discussed many times, the basic purpose of effective communication is achieving the targeted purpose. If we are trying to dominate the people through our language, if we want to impress them rather than expressing, then we are not going to achieve the desired results. Although we are bragging that we have used very good words, yet, the purpose is not achieved and the communication is flawed one. So the first principle while we are communicating and we are choosing the different word or vocabulary for our message is ex try to express, not try to impress. If we are trying to express, we are facilitating our ideas. If we are trying to impress or dominate, then our purpose is not the sad one. Second thing is, we can say again to this one like, you need to communicate, you need not to confuse. Whenever you are communicating, basically you are facilitating, you are not confusing. But if you want to put some impression, you are going to confuse someone. So for this purpose, first of all, we need to avoid obscure words. What are the obscure words? Obscure is opposite to clear. Sometimes we have seen here, I have given a little list of these kind of words. I mean here we can see one word aforementioned. So rather than writing aforementioned, we can simply write already discussed, already mentioned. So why we are putting our reader in a trouble by using this kind of word? I mean we can use the word first instead of initial we can use agree instead of exceed so same about we need to avoid pertain to we can use about so the list goes on and on and here you can find few more words I mean simply when you can say i'm trying you need uh, i'm trying to do this thing that's quite easier so if we are saying my endeavors, that would be difficult. You can simply say pay instead of remittance. So we need not to use these red column words. We need to use these alternate words instead. Another thing point to ponder here is there is no hard and fast rule in communication. It can vary 
from instance to instance, from situation to situation, from person to person. So if you are communicating with a very qualified kind of people who you know that they can understand these kind of terminologies quite easily, these kind of words quite easily, then you can use them. But few students can ask the question, sir, why we can't use disclose? We know it very well. Why we need to use show always? You can use disclose. But if you are talking to very simple kind of people who have a very beginner kind of vocabulary and you are using the word disclose, probably they won't understand. So the basic principle I told you is to communicate, not to confuse. So when you can communicate through show to a simple person, why you are choosing for disclose? So you need to convey your message. That's the real story. So there is no case, no hard and fast rule that you are these words which are in red are strictly prohibited. That is not the case. But just for achieving clarity and for facilitating our audience, we are saying that we need to use these words in the green one rather than these in the red one. These are more easier to understand. So we need to avoid obscure words. Then we need to use acronyms, abbreviations and jargons. Acronyms, we can say a shortcut word. We use the first letter of the each word which is over there. As we can see mother against drunk driving, we can use mad. You are well aware about these acronyms. You can you use these kind of acronyms for many of your courses, like you use oops and other words, like uh, in short words for different courses. So these acronyms can facilitate. So you can use these acronyms. Then there are abbreviations like WHO, World Health Organization. Acronyms. The basic difference, what I can say between acronyms and abbreviations is the acronyms we can say short words, but these are not word wide established. Few are words wide established, but not. But when the words are these kind of abbreviations are word wide established and well recognized, reckoned by uh, most of the people, majority of the people of the world, then these are abbreviations like WHO, so the, you can use these short words instead of using World Health Organization to facilitate your audience. And then there are the jargons. Jargons, we can say there are different genres of speaking. There is one language, but in specific fields, we use some specific kind of terminologies. So, if our required audience is from that particular group, then rather than using too many words, we can use those small words and those terminologies to facilitate them. They are the few specific words. Like we can see uh, in medical terminology, usually if we want to judge anything, we can say identify, judge. But when it comes to medical, and uh, we are talking any doctor has judged uh, the symptoms or any kind of we can say disease so we call it uh, diagnosis diagnosed diagnosis so now you can see the same language english but jargons are different so you can use jargons that can facilitate your audience well of that particular field now the last one we and the fourth one is using the active voice instead of passive voice here you can see this sentence over time is favored by hourly workers for a very simple audience this is a bit difficult whereas this is this one is quite easier so if we are using active voice 
instead of passive voice it can facilitate our audience that as we have discussed earlier on as i have told you earlier on that there is no hard and fast rule that you can't use passive voice you can use passive voice according to situation according to requirement but it is suggested that if you want to keep your message clear and easy then it's better to use active voice it can facilitate your audience well so overall we have learned the ways of achieving clarity if we use these four ways we can achieve the clarity that's enough for today thank you very much and if you have any query you can consult me thank you very much allah hafiz take care of yourself